Most people agree that Warren Buffett is the best investor of all time. He continues to lead Berkshire Hathaway as chairman and CEO at the age of 92. Buffett increased the stock's value at a compounded yearly gain of 20.1% since assuming control of the business in 1965. For contrast, that is over twice as much as the S&P 500's yearly total return of 10.5%. Over the same time span, this difference may not seem significant unless you comprehend the potential of long-term compounding. To put that into perspective, each $1,000 invested in Berkshire would have generated $36.4 million. The S&P 500 would have returned $302,000 for every $1,000 invested. That variation is significant. How then does Buffett succeed? The main strength of Warren Buffett is his grasp of value investing at its core. He's aware that equities represent an ownership interest in a legitimate corporation, not merely prices and charts. As a result, when investing, you need to think like a business owner. Buffett has achieved a great deal of success by investing in and hanging on to long-term profitable firms. These are true cash-flowing companies with large economic moats. Buffett then reinvests and buys shares in more successful companies using the earnings and dividend payments. Over time, this has a substantial compounding effect. Although Berkshire Hathaway, the corporation owned by Buffett, does not distribute dividends, it undoubtedly enjoys getting them. The public stock holdings are projected to generate dividend payments of more than $6 billion in 2022. That amounts to $6 billion in a single year. The BNSF Railroad, Geico, Seas Candy, Nebraska Furniture Mart, and other totally owned companies also contribute to their operating income. Hey, welcome to Stock Market Mate. For today's video, we'll talk about why Warren Buffett loves dividend stocks. Before we get started, do leave a like and subscribe to the channel to help us beat the YouTube algorithm. You could be feeling pessimistic about investing in light of the 2022 stock market crash. There is a pervasive negative attitude. But now is not the time to let your long-term objective slip your mind. To assist refocus our community on some basic investment ideas, we're making this video today. Warren Buffett is the best person to help with it. Value investing is a term used to describe Warren Buffett. Using this strategy, you try to purchase stocks that are trading below their true value. Although it appears straightforward, there is much more to it. Even the legendary Warren Buffett has noticed a substantial change in his investing approach over time. He transitioned from trading what he referred to as used cigar butts to owning a sustained business. I've been taught by Ben Graham to buy things on a quantitative basis, look around for things that are cheap. And that I was taught that, say, in 1949 or 50. They made a big impression on me. So I went around looking for what I call used cigar butts of stocks. And the cigar butt approach to buying stocks is that you walk down the street and you're looking around for cigar butts and you find this, honestly, this terrible looking, soggy, ugly looking cigar, one puff left in it. But you pick it up and you get your one puff. It's disgusting, you throw it away, but it's free. I mean, it's cheap. And then you look around for another soggy, you know, one puff cigar. Well, that's what I did for years. It's a mistake. Uh, although you can make money doing it, but you can't make it with big money. It's so much easier just to to buy a wonderful business. And so now I would rather buy a wonderful business at a fair price than a fair business at a wonderful price. You really want to be in a wonderful business because the time is the friend of the wonderful business. You keep compounding, it keeps doing more business and you keep making more money. His investing partner, Charlie Munger, had a significant impact in his decision to shift his attention to the quality of the underlying business. The purchase of C's candies taught them the most about the value of quality. But we both kept learning all the time so that the man we were five years earlier was less sensible than the man who ultimately was there. And C's Candy did teach us both a wonderful lesson. And it'll teach you a lesson if I tell you the full story. If C's Candy had asked $100,000 more, Warren and I would have walked. That's how dumb we were at that time. 10,000 more. <laughs> and one of the reasons we didn't walk is while we were making this wonderful decision, we weren't going to pay a dime more. Ira Marshall said to us, you guys are crazy. There's some things you should pay up for. You're underestimating quality. Well, Warren and I, instead of behaving the way they do in a lot of places. We listened to the criticism. We changed our mind. And that is a very good lesson for, for anyone. 
The ability to take criticism constructively is a, well, think of all the money we made for, for accepting that one criticism. And if you count the indirect effects from what we learned from buying C's, you can say that Berkshire's been built partly by learning from criticism. We'll explain why it would have been a bad decision to leave C's candy right away. For $25 million, Berkshire Hathaway acquired the entire business in 1972. That year, the business had $31 million in sales and produced $2.083 million in profits after taxes. In addition, based on Buffett's assessment of C's, the company required $8 million in working capital to operate. He promised a $25 million payment and wouldn't go any higher. That would have been a foolish choice to make. As of 2007, C's Candies has generated pre-tax earnings of $1.35 billion for Berkshire Hathaway. Moreover, C's generated a pre-tax profit of approximately $82 million that year on sales of $383 million. As a result, Buffett has more than tripled his original investment and now C's Candy. Based on this, it made little difference if they paid $100,000, $1 million, or heck, even $10 million extra each year and every year. Since then, it has only gotten better. In 2019, Buffett claimed that the chocolate company continues to be a cash cow for Berkshire Hathaway and that C's has generated $2 billion in pre-tax earnings. C's Candies is an excellent example of the qualities Buffett values in a company. Through strong, branded client devotion, the company has developed a competitive advantage. According to Buffett, what we look for in a corporation is a long-term competitive edge in a reliable industry. If organic growth accelerates as a result, that's fantastic. Nonetheless, such a business is profitable even in the absence of organic expansion. Simply put, we'll take the lucrative profits out of the company and invest them in other companies that are like it. He treated C's candies just in this manner. Although there was little room for growth, the business could guarantee a steady cash flow. All of Buffett's subsequent investments would reflect this philosophy of making excellent purchases at reasonable costs. Some of you might be wondering what this has to do with dividend stocks at this point. These sweets are fundamentally a dividend stock. Simply put, Berkshire is the only owner of the business. Almost all of the profits are distributed to Buffett so he can reinvest in new businesses. Seize Candy has practically paid us everything they have earned. It would be a grave error for Seize Candy to keep the money since they lack the capacity to employ significant sums of money that they wisely generate through their business. They, therefore, distributed Berkshire and we intend to shift that to another location where that dollar will, in terms of present value, be worth $1.10 or $1.20. A sizable portion of Berkshire Hathaway's capital has been invested in dividend-paying stocks by Warren Buffett because he enjoys receiving dividends from the stocks he invests in. In particular, he has placed a focus on stocks that regularly raise their payouts on an annual basis. In fact, the dividends paid by equities in Berkshire's portfolio to the business would total more than $880 million in just the second quarter of 2017. Even though Buffett loves dividends, Berkshire Hathaway has never paid one to its stockholders, and Buffett has no immediate plans to start doing so. Even while Buffett himself stated in a letter to Berkshire shareholders in 2012 that it puzzles them that the company enjoys the dividends we receive from most of the equities Berkshire owns, yet pays out nothing itself. His logic makes complete sense. Well, that's about it for today's video. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. If you found this video helpful, kindly click the like and subscribe button. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, you're going to want to watch one of these two videos right here. Enjoy!